Hi and welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to talk about how you can create typed HTTP client in ASP.NET Core. In my solution, I have two projects. This project is very basic. I, I've just created it using ASP.NET Core Web API template. It's the basic template. I have not added any code or made any change to it. So if you create the template, you will get this. And it, it has a testing controller that returns um, an array of five um, temperature states and just random numbers that you can use for testing for API. Uh, it has uh, all data and swashbuckle in, installed already and it's using them uh, let's go ahead and run it for a moment. So it's running. Uh, basically, you have this route that you can try and execute, and you'll get this random data. And that's it. And that's all we need for our demo project. My other project is also a very basic ASP.NET Core 5 project. We have nothing more than one index page. And in here, we are going to show the weather information that comes back from weather service. And I'm going to um, use HTTP client to call for an HTTP API. Um, but I'm going to use uh, it in two ways. The first one is usually uh, many developers use. The other one is using typed client, which is a more clean and um, more reusable type. Uh, so let's go ahead and see how it works. Okay, let's create our HTTP client using new HTTP client like this. It's not the best practice, but I'm going to show you how this works. So let's call for get async and let's um, use HTTPS a local past. And as if I could remember, the URL was this. Also notice that we are using uh, 5101 because uh, eventually we need to run both applications at the same time and we cannot use the same ports. So it's going to be one like this and the weather forecast URL and that's it so what we want is the array of weather information if i go to weather service and go to this one you can see that there is a weather for forecast class uh, and basically we need something like this but um, Consider the fact that we don't have access to the source code of the external web API. That's usually what happens. You have a, a weather web service online and you call it and you receive some data. There is no uh, reference type that we can add to our project and do so. Uh, so uh, we have to create another object in our own project uh, to uh, represent this data type. I can go ahead and type all these in my other project, but there's a very simple tool in Visual Studio that you can use. Let's go to our web service and just copy one JSON object like this. And now I can go to my model and add a class and let's call it 
weather info and um, I put the cursor here and go to um, paste special and use paste JSON as classes and as you can see we kind of get all the properties that we need like this but also we have to do some cleanup and to match the C sharp code practices let's change the um, naming and that's it so now we have um, an object in our own project that's going to represent this data that is coming from the other uh, application or other web service and now let's go here and let's have a property of i list of weather info and let's call this weather list and now i'm going to populate this list using this client uh, but of course uh, we have to do some mapping and some conversion let's go to this um, and add an await with await you need the async and with async you need the task so let's do all that um, and so I get the data using this part and then I go to content and I can now uh, read as JSON this is a new feature in ASP.NET Core and .NET basically and you can use this read from JSON async and it is very interesting because you can do conversions and let's add another weight weight so the result type is my list of weather info and that's it and uh, we have now our list of weathers converted to C sharp object. It's going. It is. It's a little messy in here, but it works. I can. I can. I cannot make it much cleaner because you are going to use to await at the same time. Of course, you can break it into lines, but I don't like that. I just want to see everything at the same time. So that's what I came up with at the end. And now let's show this data in our index page. So now I'm going to paste some code here. There's nothing special about it, just it takes time and nothing interesting about it. And we are just going through all items in weather list and showing them in the table that's all for now let's save everything and run both projects at the same time do so let's go to our solution and set a startup projects go to multiple startup projects and pick a start for both applications you usually want to run weather service first then my app because your my app is uh, dependent to weather service working so let's run both applications at the same time so the web service up and running and my project is in here and as you can see the weather information is showing so our project is working and you might think that our work is done but there's a catch here 
Using HTTP client uh, and creating a new instance every time you have a get method can lead to port exhaustion. Uh, HTTP client uses TCP and for TCP you need ports. And when you are creating a lot of HTTP client, you are using a lot of ports. And if you are under load, uh, your operation system can lose all the open ports to create a new HTTP client. And that's a problem that you can have if you are not mm, careful. We had a couple of workarounds to fix this problem, but with the newer versions of ASP.NET Core, you can use something called iHttp client factory, which I'm not going to go through at the moment, but I'm going to show you how it works and how you can use typed clients uh, alongside with HTTP client factory to uh, have a better code and a uh, more robust application. So first, let's create a typed HTTP client. Typed HTTP client is the same as this kind of HTTP client, but it's a typed one. So let's go ahead and create one a public class and call it weather client and uh, we have a method here mm, let's have it public and the result will be our list of weather mm, and let's add a task one because mm, get weather info and there is no arguments so what we are going to do is to do this one and just return it and with an async and for the client let's add a private read only i http or let's http and client and call it client underline and i can use the visual studio to create this construction for me and i'm going to use this like this and we are done uh, so in our index model let's inject this weather client so then i use private with only weather client and let's have it like this Again, I can use the USA to generate constructor. And let's use the weather client. And get rid of all these. And get weather info. So everything seems to be working. We're kind of done. Uh, let's run the application and see what happens. Let's close all about this and go without debugging. So the application is running, but we hit a problem uh, because there is an unres unresolved or unable to resolve service. Um, basically, it's saying that our weather client has not been injected. And so we have to solve that problem by injecting the weather client and to do that we need to inject a HTTP client basically let's go to a startup and 
go to services add http client like this and uh, you want weather client to be injected and that's it we are adding the injection for better client inside it and there is http client and it's also going to be injected and http client uses i http client factory uh, in behind the scenes so it makes everything safe and simple for us uh, let's save everything and run the project again There is a problem. I'll start code here. Let's run the project again. So our application is working again, but this time we have a very better code. You can say it's a clean code, and um, I can add other methods for HTTP here if you are going to post, put, head and you can add all of those in here and um, of course you can move this class to its own file if you are one of those who want to have everything separated and so and that's uh, how it works now we have a typed client which is easier to use clean and um, it also using HTTP client factory behind the scenes uh, which is more optimized and um, that's it that's uh, my video for today I hope you use this feature called Type Client. You can always find more information about Type Clients in Microsoft Docs. Uh, and if you like this video, please uh, share and uh, subscribe. And see you in the next videos.